You're listening to The Journey with Ellie and Erin. Join us every week as we talk about all the things woo, wise and wonderful with our guests and have the bigger, braver, bolder conversations that women should be having so that we can be the change the world needs. Welcome, welcome to another episode of The Journey with Ellie and Erin. As always, I am Erin, she is Ellie, and uh, the guest that we have for you today is very exciting. I read her bio uh, early this morning uh, for about the 27th time and was like, wow, this is going to be a good conversation. So I'm excited to uh, to share her with you this morning. Uh, so the, the person that we're speaking to today is, uh, is Cheryl uh, and she is an experienced therapist, success mindset coach, energy healer, international speaker, and number one best-selling author. Cheryl helps spiritual entrepreneurs uncover and rapidly heal their subconscious beliefs and hidden energetic blocks so they can activate their higher selves embody their soul's purpose and reach limitless levels of expansion without the overwhelm and hustle. Her signature approach is neuroenergetics, a powerful and unique blend of science and spirituality. This leverages her two decades of expertise in psychology and neuroscience with subconscious healing and energy work. It is the power of this method that enabled Cheryl to shift from rock bottom to rock star as just a few years ago, she was burned out and a hundred thousand dollars in debt. Today, Cheryl is debt-free and has created a multi-six-figure business while working just three days a week, and now she inspires women worldwide to do exactly the same. Cheryl has been featured in global publications such as The Brains Magazine, Thrive Global, Medium, and Elephant Journal, and she resides in New Jersey with her husband and two sons and enjoys traveling all over the world, and that is quite the story that I'm looking forward to diving into. Welcome, welcome, Cheryl. It's nice to have you here. Thank you. It's great um, to be here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ellie, I'm just going to hand it straight over to you because I can see you've got like, you're leaning in for a question. <laughs> yeah, I, I thank you very much for being here, Cheryl. It's always lovely to to meet um, meet people all over the world. It's one of the joys of doing this radio show and podcast. I think before we met, I was having a little look on your um, social media and all of those sorts of things. And there were a number of things I saw that I just really resonated. So I'm just going to go deep straight away. One of the things I loved. Yeah, let's just, let's just do this. um, Was the, the real understanding you have of the number of the levels that you have to go through that we have this conscious awareness that we need to make change. Then we have to work on our subconscious and then we have to work on the energy. And I just, loved that because it's absolutely what we stand for in the work that we do and I just wondered how did you how did you learn about energy like how did energy become a thing in your life and then how were you able to sort of realize the power of it to then work with other people well I've been into energy um probably for about 10 years now privately on my own I've been working with my own energy um I became a Reiki master pretty much for myself, um, because as a, a, a qualified therapist, psychotherapist, I was afraid to introduce that into my therapy world, because I was afraid of what people would think and be judged. Um, but the more I really um, became comfortable and confident with myself as a therapist, and I uncovered like there's more than one way to deal with issues, there's more than one way to deal with trauma right? And this is coming from a therapist now. So this might blow up a couple of people's minds. Therapy is <laughs> great. Therapy is great, right? And I love my clients, but I don't want to see my clients in my office for a year, two years, three years. I want quick results. Like how, how can we get quicker results, right? Therapy is all about the conscious mind, right? We're talking about the things that we know, the things that we can remember, But when I started doing my own healing and dove into the subconscious work, I realized, wait a minute, we can access something that we don't consciously have any recollection of or conscious memory of. And that's where the trajectory of the work that I do started changing with my clients. Then I started enter, I entered like the energy part of it because, all right, now I'm already talking about the subconscious. So they're either going to think I'm crazy or I'm not. Right. So at this point, what, what's that, you know, what if I 
add in some energy work. And the three, the, the three of them together are potent, are potent. Yeah. And I can clear out Absolutely. things in just a few it's, sessions um, that it it's would an take amazing me combination years, if to ever, to, to clear out. Yeah. Like what, a, and I, I see that you do EFT tapping, um, which is something that mm -hmm. I do. And that is just such an amazing tool to be able to use. The difference mm -hmm. that the way you can access, and anyone listening, if you haven't tried it, then it is, it's an incredible tool. You're able to access stuff that you don't even mm -hmm. know. Like it really is tapping into that subconscious, just being able to mm -hmm. bring that forward. And the, I had a great, um, teacher lecturer whoever the, the woman who taught and the way she described it and I think she'd heard it from somewhere else was what EFT allows you to do is really empty the the pond of all the dirty crap that you don't want you can get your shopping trolley out you can get the mud and the gunk and all of the disgustingness so then when you actually add positive to it it's actually yes. clean enough to have it whereas if you don't clear the crap out what does one little pot of positive do and yet that's kind of almost where we'd got to it's like if we just say our positive mm -hmm. affirmations if we just you know understand what we know and, and deal with mm -hmm. that then that's going to be enough and it really yeah warmed my heart but also just inspired me even more to see how much how much depth you go to with clients because what are the tools that you have found have really helped you on your journey when you talk about you talk about being a reiki master what other techniques and tools do you use I, well, I use Reiki, I use EFT tapping, I use, um, I work in the bio field a lot, which is, you know, the energy field or the auric field, the electromagnetic field. I do a lot of hypnosis. I love the subconscious work because that's what really is diving into our, our beliefs, right? Our beliefs are our reality. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I find that we're carrying along these beliefs, these generational beliefs or these ancestral beliefs that aren't even ours. You know, how many times growing up have you heard things like, you know, money doesn't grow on trees or, you know, children are to be seen and not heard. So we hear these things and we adopt them as our own beliefs when really they were never ours to begin with. Now they carry us through our entire life, right? Mm. So when we want to get up and do a presentation subconsciously, our subconscious is like, nope, you're not going to be safe. You have to be seen and not heard. And it brings it up all of the time. And until you can get back to that root cause, like where was it originated? Where was the first mm -hmm. time you learned this or heard this and clear it out? It's going to keep repeating. So subconscious work is a big piece of what I do. So combining really the, you know, your conscious thoughts, what you want to change mm -hmm. with the subconscious work, with the energy work, that's like the magic sauce. Mm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you talk in your um, in your bio about how you were really overwhelmed and burnt out. How did you know what what was the start of this journey to, to being where you are now? Because I'm always really interested because overwhelm and burnout is such a it's such a topical word and, and phrase at the moment. So many people have been mm -hmm. feeling it for a number of years. I think it's probably changed in the last three years with COVID. I think what's causing it is slightly different, but it's still a huge part of of people's lives particularly women how did you find yourself in that situation and then how did you work your way out of it and through it so it was a progression of how it happened um i was the the do it all you know i was the wife i was the mom my kids were in high level sports and um you know i, I had a career i was a full-time school counselor and I was trying to build up my own private practice, my therapy practice. So I was trying, I was trying to split so many pieces of me, so many parts of me, and trying to, you know, be the perfect wife, be the perfect mom, be the perfect therapist, you know. And before I knew it, I just was detached. You know, I was detaching from my children. I was detaching from my husband. I was detaching from myself, really. Um, and I was experiencing so much, I was having so much anxiety. I was having panic attacks, driving to my school job. And, you know, we were in debt at that time. There were so many things that were happening that I literally hit a wall and crashed and burned out. And it was at that time where 
I knew that I had to make some drastic changes because I was going to lose everything. I was going to lose my family. I was going to lose my marriage. I was going to lose my home. I was going to lose everything if I didn't take a, a really hard look at my life and how I got here. So that's where I really found the subconscious work. I really stumbled across it. I met somebody who did some RTT and I said, hey, I've got nothing to lose. And what I uncovered was we talk about beliefs and how we've inherited beliefs. I had this belief that I had to work hard to be successful. And that was never my belief. Because I don't want to work hard to be successful. I want to work easy, right? My conscious mind says, no, work easy. There's got to be a def different way. But my subconscious like, no, you have to work hard. You've got to work 70 hours a week because that's what I saw my mother do. Mm -hmm. I saw my mother working 70 hours a week. My mother is very successful. So I adopted that belief as my own. And in hypnosis, deep, diving deep into the subconscious, when I realized this, I'm like, holy crap, like, that's not true. That's not what I want to believe. So I started doing all of that inner work to reprogram myself a different way. And when I did, I was able to leave my full-time school job because it was a toxic situation anyway. My, my passion was doing therapy. So I left my school job to start my full-time therapy business that I was doing very, very part-time and everything started to fall into place, you know, because I wasn't in that energetic space of lack, of hustle, of resentment, right? So when I was able to leave all that, my energy rose up and I was able to match a certain, you know, a couple of, you know, things like, you know, love into my life, like gratitude into my life. So, so many things started shifting and opening up for me. And, um, and then when I look where I am today, I work two, maybe three days a week. Mm. That's it. Yeah. When, like, I love the fact that you were able to see that you were in a space that needed, that you needed to do that work on yourself. How easy was it to know that? Because, you know, from clients that, that I've worked with and clients we've worked with together, often that very first realization that, that you need to do something different is almost the hardest step because mm -hmm. we get so good at, it'll be fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm I'm perfectly fine. And then suddenly that admitting to ourselves that we're not, we're not okay is one of the biggest challenges. How did you work through that? And is that something you see with, with your clients a lot? Yes. Yes. So I did all of, you know, I did everything on my own. Like, I'm okay. I can handle all this. Right. I did. I had the positive affirmations up. I did, you know, worked with mentors, worked with, I was in therapy. I did like all of the things, right. I did all of the things, but it wasn't, it was helping, but not helping enough. Mm -hmm. um, so after I burned out, I, I knew I had to do something differently. I, I knew I needed let's just say a more drastic measure. What I didn't know what that was, you know. Um, but when I started working with my mentor doing hypnosis, and I kid you not, in one session, she was able to identify the root cause and I started to connect the dots. Mm. It was like, oh my goodness. You know, because before it was all these fragmented thoughts, all these fragmented beliefs, all these fragmented ways of doing things. But once the dots were connected and I was able to see it clearly, it was like the, you know, the aha moment for me. You know, it was eye opening. It was hard, you know, um, and I had to do a lot of healing around that. Yeah, you know, a lot of healing. And I still do. I still do. Because every level you know, that I, that I move up to, or I expand into brings up some of these past issues, these past beliefs. And I have to keep myself in check all of the time, all of the time. Yeah. That really you know, is so one of the not joyful a one things. And done. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, it's one of the joyful things about doing the work, isn't it? You think, yay, I've done it. I've cleared that. And then, you know, next thing you know, something else is biting you on the ass yeah. and it's like, oh, okay, what's the next thing? <laughs> I've cleared yeah. that one. What? 
but you're able to recognize it quicker. Yeah. Like now I can see, okay, I see it's coming up. Now let me take, take it, you know, and really work with it. Yeah. Yeah. So true. Mm-hmm. And having that awareness of being able to explore it and not worry about the fact that you're not okay. I think that was one of the the biggest learnings for me. And in my journey was actually being okay with, with the not being okay. And just, oh, it's yeah. just part of the journey rather than being like, oh golly, it's all gone horribly wrong. Erin, you're sitting yeah. there very quietly, which I know is a little bit to do with your internet, but also I'm sure you are taking it all in and you're about Soaking to blow our up. minds with some incredible questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was actually uh, furiously typing notes of what's coming up for me as, uh, as you're talking. So um, yeah, like I, I love the uh, the willingness to explore alternative options. Um, I think we are very conditioned to look at what's on the store shelf instead of asking the store manager, like, what have you got behind the doors, you know? And uh, I, I guess my curiosity at this point is piqued by your, not just your willingness to try something different, but your um, willingness to seek it out, like to actually go and look for those things. Like, what do you think, you know, is that, was that quite outside of your norm to do that kind of thing? Or was that something you were already open to in other aspects of your life that you just hadn't explored in that space? Like what was that kind of catalyst or driver for you? So I've always been interested in alternative ways Um, but like I said, I kept myself very separate from my business, from my therapy. So there was some duality there. So I felt like, you know, I knew that there was a different way of healing, but I was so afraid to bring that into my practice, um, because it did work for me, you know, but when I did bring it in, it started healing my clients in a very, very different way, a more profound way. So to answer your question, I've always been very interested in it, but I didn't always merge the two, you know, and even in my business for a long time, I kept it very, very up until recently, I, I, honestly, up until probably the last six months, I kept it very bus- very separate and I didn't call myself an energy healer and a therapist. I was a, I was a mindset coach because like you said, we try to keep things in the box, right? Mm-hmm. Who am I in the online space? I can't be a therapist in the online space because I'm licensed in my own state, in my own country. So who am I in the online space? I didn't know. And I felt very conflicted until I was able to really embrace and embody all the parts of myself. And it feels so good. And since then, so many things have shifted in my business because I'm not fragmented. I'm not keeping it separate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing that came up for me, um, thanks for sharing that. Cause I think that's really important to like, to recognize that actually we have to be willing, right? Like it's not enough to, um, to know that it's there or to be capable of accessing it. We have to be willing to do that. And, um, I think sometimes that's the block that we stumble at the most, um, is our willingness to change because it's uncomfortable and it's, feels unsafe perhaps because yeah. we don't know what it looks like exactly. so um i appreciate it's that it's not really um, uncomfortable it's it's yes it's the fear of the unknown it feels uncomfortable to go through that change but it's also our conditioning mm. you know how, what how are we conditioned in our families in our society in our cultures you know a lot yeah. of that is conditioning as well yeah yeah, hundred percent. And I know Ellie is a big fan of conditioning, so probably has uh, something to say Not there. Not a fan of get... conditioning, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a fan of a doing the work fan of, on conditioning. Uh, of doing the work on conditioning. <laughs> yes, let me reframe that. Um, <laughs> the other thing I wanted to ask about, um, and listening to you speak about your own journey with this, um, timing feels like a really important part of the puzzle in your life and in your, the way that you've navigated things. Um, what do you think, like for those people who are feeling the nudge around, uh, you know, it's time to, to make a change or it's time to do something differently or, or whatever, like, what would you say to them about 
timing and the importance of that in the process? Well, if they're feeling in the nudge where they know that there's something, they know that there's something more, but they don't know what it is, then it's time to take a different approach. You know, it's time to stop dipping your feet in the water and to jump in. Because if you if you just dip your feet in the water, you're never going to get where you want to get. You're never going to get there. You're always going to be, ah, it's too cold. Oh, it's too cold. But if you just jump in, there's so much beauty and so much freedom on the other side, right? Like the, like the lotus flower, right? The lotus flower has to push, 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 push through the mud to come up and to bloom into this beautiful flower, right? If you don't take the chance and you don't push yourself and you don't, you know, dive right in, you're never going to know all of this beauty, all of this freedom that's on the other side of it. So if you're feeling that nudge, if you know that there's more, just take the plunge. I've got a question for you, and I love that you talk about that plunge. And actually, I've been doing that with, it's been really hot here recently. I've been making myself dive into water rather than just sitting going, oh, it's a bit cold. And it's so much better. It's so much better. So <laughs> put that in all parts of life. Um, but one of my questions is, you, you talk about your husband and you talk about your children. How did they... Um, respond to you know perhaps the more alternative healing and work that you were doing because often one of the challenges we face when we sort of start to go down this route of exploring other ways of doing things that aren't perhaps you know the the normal ways of doing things we have that sort of pushback or we have that fear that other people are going to judge us and particularly our loved ones because obviously we we want them to come on the journey or we want them to at least understand it but how has that been for you was there an did they understand from the start or has there been a piece of education with the work that you've done I'd love to know how you sort of navigated that um and how how you worked through it yeah well when things were really bad between my husband and I and I started doing my own work it was at that junction where I was growing and I was expanding. And if he were to stay there, we wouldn't be together anymore. So he saw that growth in me and he decided, you know what? I'm going to grow with her. And we started doing personal development things together. We started going to workshops. We actually went to Dr. Joe Dispenza. We spent three days um, at one of his workshops together. Like that's my husband diving in because Joe Dispenza, <laughs> It's not, you know, that's not dipping your foot in the water. <laughs> so my husband, um, he's a huge, huge supporter of me. He's, he's seen my own growth. He's done his own work. We continue to do work together. Uh, my children, on the other hand, um, they think I'm a little nuts. <laughs> You're their mother. You're all, they're always going to think of you yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, my Chris is all like, over the house. Like, rocks, children. So there's rocks all over the place. What, what's that smell with the sage? <laughs> 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 uh, that's all right. They, they, they love me regardless. <laughs> yeah. But that yeah. was a, that was a very pivotal moment in um, my relationship with my husband. We were either going to grow together or we were going to grow apart. Mm. Wow, that's testament to him as an individual to be willing to do that, to be willing to see the difference in you and not be angry at it or not be frustrated or not feel threatened by that, but to be able to go, oh, I like that. I think I want some of that as well. And to, yes. to do that personal growth together, like what a beautiful way to to build your relationship together um, as you move forward, I just, yeah. Wow. He sounds like a, an he incredible really man. Yeah, he really is. And, and it's cool because I can, I can talk to him about all of the things that are happening in my life or all of the things that, that the changes that I've seen in my clients and he gets it. You know, I can't talk about that with everybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I'm curious. Um, you said that you, you know, the, the subconscious stuff, came initially from, um, you know, your own work with therapist and, and that sort of stuff. But in terms of the, um, the energy 
side of things and the the I guess the more woo stuff, the stuff that goes beyond our conscious and subconscious. Um you mentioned Joe Dispenza, so I'm guessing that there's some sort of link there to, you know, some of his work. But who have the other influences been for you in that space? And where did you access them? Like where did how did they come into your consciousness as people who might be able to teach you something? Yeah. So my very, very first experience was reading a Gabby Bernstein book. Um, I don't even know which one. Maybe the universe has your back or maybe it was even before that. And something resonated with that. And then I read all of her books. And then um, I got into Joe Dispenza and the meditation and the quantum. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, it was really a black hole for me. Because I wanted more. I wanted to learn more. I wanted to soak it up. I wanted to feel it. I wanted to experience it. Um, and it's just grown from there. Um, you know, and, you know, I love, you know, all of those books, you know, The Body Keeps Score and Bessel van der Kolk and um, Eckhart Tolle. Like, I'm just, I love all of it. I love all of it. That's all that, I, that's my fun read. You know, I don't, I'm not reading novels or romance things. I'm reading like Eckhart Tolle and Joe Dispenza and Bessel van der Like I'm reading like stuff that just resonates with me, helps me to mm. expand as a person. Mm. We're so lucky, aren't we, to live at a time where you can just pick up a Gabby Bernstein book or a Rebecca Campbell mm. or you know, and Eckhart Tolle, they're all there, easy to get hold. Yeah. You don't have to go to a special shop where, you know, there is the the heavy smell of incense and everyone's sort of looking slightly sheepishly at each other as they go in, <laughs> sort of not willing to completely own the fact that they're they're in this space. Now you can go to, you know, whatever mainstream bookshop and, and find these things. And there's so many different paths and different opportunities to explore. And it's... Yeah. Sometimes it can almost be a bit overwhelming about, you know, which which one is for me. What do I what do I like? What is your advice to to people? You know, when you work with clients and they are starting to see these shifts with the work that that they're doing with you, how do you encourage them to continue their journey? What's what's your you know, what's your advice to, to people who are just who are dipping their toes in but they're willing to dive all in? How do they decide which is for them? Well, I have a huge toolbox um, that I love to, you know, take whatever tools out when I'm working with a client, you know, whether it be some EMDR work or whether it be some EFT tapping or whether it be some energy medicine stuff. You know, I love to just take out those tools and see what they resonate with. You know, the tapping definitely resonates with a lot of people and the energy medicine resonates with a lot of people because it's something that they can do spot on in the moment to bring down their cortisol level or to calm themselves or to just balance their meridian systems. Now, I don't, I don't know what energy medicine is. Can you just give me a little overview of what, what that is? Cause yeah. that sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I've been trained in energy psychology and energy medicine and energy medicine is um, a technique by Donna Eden. And what it does is it works with the meridian systems in our body, right? So we're EFT tapping works with the meridian systems and we're tapping on the endpoints of the meridian system. What energy medicine does is we're tracing the meridian systems with our hands. So when we trace them with our hands, that energy from our the chakras in our hands really helps to open them up and balance them. Wow. You know, and there's different points That's of our so body. Cool. You know, there's there's different energy points, there's different meridian points, there's different chakra points. So when I when I start digging those out of my toolbox and giving them to clients now, and they see it works, they're like, okay, I want more. I want more. <laughs> now I did see one thing on your social media, sand play. What is that? That looked like fun. <laughs> yeah. So that that's really deep. That's a therapeutic approach. Um, and I was trained, I did a, a three-year study with that. And it's based wow. on um Carl Jung and Jungian psychology and the, the collective unconscious. And what that is, it's a, a, tr a tray of, of this beautifully um, uh, very soft sand. And I have shelves in my office of miniatures or toys, whatever you want to call them. And my clients actually go up to the shelves and 
the miniature is actually pick them. I say, don't think about what you want to do in the sand. Just take whatever resonates with you. So they'll take things and be, I don't know why I took this. Don't worry about it. Then they create what I call a world in the sand. And it's just, it's done quietly. I'm just holding that therapeutic space for them. Um, but I look at things symbolically. I look at what they've placed in the sand, how they've placed it in the sand. Is it above the sand? Is it below the sand? Is the sand move? So there's all these different um, things that I look at. And when they're done building, we start to process it. You know, tell me a little bit about this world. Tell me about this, this object over here. And it opens the floodgates. They're able wow. to look down on it and be like, oh my God, I see what my issue is, or I see what I'm trying to work out because it's, that's the, um, the unconscious work. Yeah. Awesome. I love that you've got so many different tools. Erin, what do you, what's coming up for you? Oh, she's just having a glass of water. I timed that perfectly uh, for, for throwing her a <laughs> yeah, question, yeah. didn't Perfect I? Perfect <laughs> timing, as always. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, like like Ali said, like the the variance and, and diversity of the tools that you use and that you support your clients to access, I think, is, um, is really interesting because uh, so often, and we, we had a little brief, discussion about this earlier um when you try and define what you do so often it's about making it smaller so that it fits in people's hands and they can touch it and they can feel it and they can understand it and uh and so often what we do is actually far outside of all of that stuff mm -hmm. and uh so that the being able to articulate clearly like these are all the different things that i can help you with and these are the different ways that I do that and that sort of thing like how do you you know if you if you come across uh someone who's who knows they need to do some work but isn't sure where to start doesn't know what the work looks like or any of that sort of stuff like how do you bring people into that in a way that they feel safe enough to to dive in because you know, so often we hear people say, you've got to niche down, you've got to tell the people like, you know, I work with, you know, women who are 43 and who have, you know, been dying their greys for 12 years mm -hmm. and they've been doing this and they gave up smoking when they were 19 and they did this and that, like they try and get so specific. Um, but really like the tools that you work with would help anyone who is willing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the like, people that I work how with, how do you discern they, that? Well, they come to me because they're feeling stuck in some way, you know, and then we start bringing, we start peeling back the layers. Okay. Where, let's see where you're stuck. What are the beliefs that are causing this sabotage or this block? Right. And once we start to peel back the layers and they're able to see things a little bit more clearly, then we can start some work. You know, whether that's energy work, whether that's some subconscious hypnosis work, whether that's just a meditation right now or a sound bowl or some tuning forks where we're just going really super slow. You know, I kind of read my clients, like some of my clients say, you know, I'm really scared. You know, I'm, I don't know what to expect. So we go slow. Some of my clients are like, you know what? I want to dive right in. I don't want to dip my toe in anymore. Like I've done dip. I'm done dipping my toe in. I want to now get to the meat and potatoes of whatever my issue is. So I kind of like take the lead of my clients, but yet I know, you know, I can kind of balance it for them. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, it does. Um, and I think that's really interesting. The, the concept of um, like allowing them to lead because so often they come to you because they're not sure where to go. Right. And um, so them taking the lead is, is a really interesting duality almost in, in yeah. terms of the therapeutic space. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I, I will offer them a, a couple of things and then allow them to make a choice because that's, a, that's empowering them too. And they're feeling safe that they know what to expect, mm -hmm. you know, and every person I work with, I work with very differently. I don't have a standardized way of working with people. It's very intuitive and it's really based on what my clients need. You know, it's all individualized. 
What has cool, been Ellie, your you had biggest a question, right? Yeah, I do. What's been your biggest challenge in your journey over the last ten years? I mean, obviously you've overcome so much, but what has the been what has been the thing that, that you've had to keep working on? Because I think it's really helpful for people to understand. We laugh about how once you start doing the work that, you know, something else will come up. But quite often the same thing will keep coming through and keep just in different guises. And you don't necessarily notice it as being the same thing until you do the work. What has been your, you know, your Achilles heel, I suppose? What's been your thing that you've had to really work through and and be okay with continuing to work through, if you don't mind sharing, of course? Yeah. Doubt, self-doubt, you know, at every level, I doubt myself, you know, can I handle this expansion? Am I good enough? Can I, you know, it's self-doubt, you know, I walk the walk, I talk the talk, you know, I'm right there next to my clients, you know, I'm very open with my struggles, you know, and where I've been to where I am. And it's, it's a work, work and growth are never ending never ending you never get there wherever there <laughs> is right we're always trying to get there when we get there we'll be okay we'll feel right there's no such thing as there <laughs> right? so yeah it's definitely um it's definitely been difficult to keep myself in check and notice where my fears are coming up where my doubts are coming up um and then to recognize them and to work through them so i can get to that next level whatever that next level looks like self-doubt that's such a potent one isn't it and I would challenge anyone to you know to accept that that is part of who we are because again so much of what you talk about with the conditioning honestly you're you're speaking my language you know we're, we're told for so long that we have to be a certain way and we have to do certain things and if we don't do that then that's not normal or it's not the same as everyone we're we're kind of encouraged to be the same so actually being able to find our own path feels really scary because we've been told that we shouldn't do that we should just keep doing what everyone else so I really applaud you for going down the route of therapy and and something that is very known you know at the moment that is a known way of, of you know having support but being able to integrate all of these other incredible tools what an absolute benefit to your clients and just you know for people listening to it there are there are other ways to get healed there are other ways to do the work it doesn't have to be the way that you've seen or that somebody else has done it just be curious be open to other other ways and other options because there is something that works for everybody we've just got to be brave enough to be okay with it not looking the same as it did for our, our friend or our mum or our sister or something like that and and know that we are all unique and yeah what's going to work for me might be different to what's going to work for you but that's all okay exactly. and as I said earlier the joy that there is so much out there now that we can explore oh, I just think we're so we're so incredibly lucky to to be able to work in this time as well it's it's truly yeah. truly impressive yeah, it really is. And I think you summed it up perfectly. You know, what works for one may not work for somebody else, but you just have to be open to explore all of the options that are out there. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty fab. Erin, any last few comments from you? No, I think actually that um, the, like this is possibly the one where I'm most clear on what I'm taking away from it. Uh, and I think the the listener will be the same that actually like there's a real um, a real emphasis on just diving in and being open to whatever comes uh, rather than trying to um, you know trying to send yourself in a particular direction just being okay with being out in the open water and uh, so yeah thank you for for bringing that to our consciousness and allowing us to sit with that. Cause I think all of us will, will be doing that for a little bit after, after we've uh, been in this space. So um, we appreciate that. Um, yeah. I think, did you have anything else, Ellie, or do you want me to dive on into the random questions? Oh, dive on into the random questions. I, uh, <laughs> I always like this. Part. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we, we just ask a few random questions at the end of each episode, uh, Cheryl, just to kind of, I guess, um, you know, just explore a little bit and, and to leave things 
in a lighter sort of a space. Um, so the first question that we ask is, what book do you wish you had written? Oh, wow. That's a hard one. Um, oh, my goodness. What book do I wish that I would have written? Well, all of the Gabby Bernstein books, for sure, <laughs> because they're so relatable. <laughs> they're so yeah. relatable. You know, anybody can pick up a Gabby book and see her wit, her humor, and relate to everything she's saying. Yeah. Yeah, so true. Totally. I, I love say, her stuff. Any one of Gabby Bernstein books. I'd love to come back as Gabby Bernstein in my next life. <laughs> <laughs> I think that seat might be taken, but that's <laughs> um, the the uh, the second question. If you can invite three people, living or dead, to dinner, who would you choose? Hmm. I would choose uh, Louise Hay because I just love. Louise Hay and all of her teachings. I would invite um, oh, Dr. Dispenza because I would just love to pick his brain. And who else? Um, maybe Jennifer Lopez, just because I love her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She'll like, lighten the mood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, what do you want your ninety-year-old self to be able to say to you if she was sitting in you front might of you have right to now? Say that again. I think you, I think you cut out a little bit there, Erin. You might have to just say it again. Ah, oh. oh, of course. Uh, sorry. <laughs> what do you <laughs> what do you want your ninety year old self to be able to say to you right now? Oh, I would love her to tell me that um, I did a good job. I'm proud of you. Um, look at all the lives that you, you've changed. Um, never doubt yourself. Trust yourself. And I love you. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah, perfect. I think actually that last part mm -hmm. um, is that's the might be the first time that that's actually come up, right? Can you reflect on that, Ali, for a second? Yeah, I think it is that yeah, no I one else has ever right. said that, I, and I yeah, think it is the and, first. And actually, that's no, yeah, and that's probably the the most simple yeah. part of it, isn't it? It's just I love you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, last -love, question, right? You um. You have to love yourself before you can you can love anybody else or help anybody else. It's self, you know, self love is the most powerful love that you can have. Mm. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's a yeah, whole absolutely. other conversation, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and for the next two hours, we'll be covering. No, <laughs> um, the last question uh, is: What is your guilty pleasure? Oh gosh, I love ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite flavor? Like, I love like um, I don't like anything with pieces in it. Like I like um, coffee ice cream. Pretty, I think coffee is mm -hmm. my favorite. Yeah. Oh, nice! Mm -hmm. Coffee, what, eating ice we cream and friends. watching Netflix. That is my guilty pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> perfect yeah perfect well just uh to finish on evidence that you are indeed human um thank you for that <laughs> uh you it's been a real pleasure good. real pleasure to um to have you join us on the journey and uh to allow us to be um part of your journey uh thank you so much and um ellie is there anything you want to finish just, up with i just think it's been it's been such a a privilege and a joy to talk to somebody who articulates so well the importance of doing all of the work, you know, of being able to do the conscious stuff, the subconscious, the energy of bringing all of that together. It's been, yeah, it's been validating. It's been interesting. And I really appreciate you, the work you do. And thank you for your time. It's been a real, yeah, real privilege to meet you and, and hear your wisdom. So thank you very much. 
Well, thank yeah, you. Thank you. thank you. I'm so, so honored and grateful to have been part of your show. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. And as always, we will um, have all of the links so that you can get in touch with Cheryl. You can check out her um, her work. You can Facebook and Instagram stalk her like Ellie does. You can uh, do mm -hmm. all of the things. Um, so thank you again, Cheryl, for, for being here and for sharing your journey. You're welcome. Thank you.